Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. My name is Nasser Anwahi and I will be your MC for today. We are delighted to have you here for this special event commemorating the environmental leadership and legacy of the founding father of the United Arab Emirates, the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan. To begin, I would like to give the floor to Her Excellency Lana Nseba, Ambassador and Permanent Representative of the United Arab Emirates to the United Nations, to deliver her welcoming remarks. Excellencies, colleagues, thank you so much for joining us here today despite the unwelcoming weather outside. I'm honored uh, to be here with Dr. Mishkan Al Awar, Secretary General of the Zayed International Prize for the Environment, who's doing such great work in the United Arab Emirates. We're also fortunate to be joined by George Chidiek, Envoy of the UN Secretary General on South-South Cooperation. These two are really on the front line of environmental innovation and of the partnership opportunities that drive it. Last week's HLPF revealed a clear need for greater action on environmental sustainability, from biodiversity to decarbonized energy systems. But the HLPF also highlighted that there is hope for this imperative with a wide range of new ideas, technologies, and individuals who are demonstrating that social and economic growth can be separated from environmental impacts. The Zaid International Prize for the Environment, as Dr. Lauer will tell you in greater detail, identifies and cultivates the next generation of environmental solutions and thinkers. Moreover, it aims to give visibility to the way that environmental considerations underpin the Sustainable Development Goals, to frame environmental health not only as a necessity in its own right, but as a way to create jobs, fight disease, address food insecurity, and make progress on the entirety of the SDGs. The prize has a special resonance for us in the UAE this year. It's the 100th anniversary of the birth of our late founding father, Sheikh Zayed, bin Sultan al Nahyan, which we in the UAE are calling the Year of Zayed. We're taking this time as an opportunity to remember his legacy and guidance. Uniquely for his era in the region, Sheikh Zayed called on his country to recognize the centrality of the environment to both our past and our future, even as the UAE was in the midst of its great social and economic transformation. He said, and I quote, we cherish our environment because it is an integral part of our country, our history, and our heritage. On land and in the sea, our forefathers lived and survived in this environment. They were able to do so only because they recognized the need to conserve it, to take from it only what they needed to live, and to preserve it for succeeding generations. His wisdom sowed the seeds in the UAE for the kind of seriousness and innovation we see now from the establishment of a pioneering environmental regulatory agency to the creation from scratch of a world-class renewable energy sector in the heart of a hydrocarbon economy. Sheikh Zayed's vision also informs how we engage globally. The Zayed International Prize for the Environment and its partnership with the UN is one of these efforts to promote the kind of inspirational action that the world needs today. So we look forward very much to discussing today the environmental innovations and leadership that the prize is aiming to spotlight. And critically, we look forward to hearing how, from all of you, including through the United Nations, we can scale up these achievements and ambitions collectively. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Ambassador. I would now like to give the floor to Mr. George Chediak, Envoy of the United Nations Secretary General on South-South Cooperation. Your Excellency, Lana Nusseini, Ambassador and President and Representative of the United Nations, Dr. Meshgan al Secretary General of the Sayed International Prize for the Environment, Distinguished Permanent Representatives of Georgia, Lebanon, the State of Palestine, the League of Arab States, Saudi Arabia. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, uh, this year I was taking a flight from Etihad from Bangkok to New York, and we had a stopover in Abu Dhabi. And there I saw a lot of signs about the year of Sayer. And I was intrigued, and in the flight, the 12 hour flight from Abu Dhabi to New York, they were showing documentaries on the legacy of that extraordinary man. And I say that because in 1971, a very difficult year, with his leadership and the leadership of the other leaders 
of the Emirates, they managed to put together this country under very difficult circumstances. And it was not just the political initiative and the political leadership that was demonstrated, but also a commitment to build a country based on different principles. Principles of tolerance, principles of sustainability. And this is interesting because only one year later, the UN had its first environment conference in 1972 in Stockholm. And his legacy is really remarkable. In that great country, you all have been able to build. A country that, as you said, in spite of being endowed with a great wealth on hydrocarbons, is building a sustainable economy. I remember going to the electricity authority there and so on, get first-hand knowledge on how you are turning electricity generation to solar and other alternative uh, energy sources. Also on how they are building the tolerance to the many people who want to go to make a living thanks to the very prosperous economy of your country. So therefore, the legacy of Sayed lives in the great contribution and the great example of the United Arab Emirates. And I'm very happy, therefore, that our office is associated very closely with this name. And it is because two years ago, in 2016, we had one of our landmark events, the UN South-South Expo. And we organized it in Dubai in partnership with the Sayed Foundation for the Environment. So we have a link, a direct link, with the name and the legacy of this great man. And it was a very successful expo. I want to really praise the leadership of Dr. Alawar and also the, the president of the foundation. And it showcased a lot of, ex of uh, experiences very valid on South-South cooperation. And in that context, I said at the time that it was very nice and very relevant for us to organize the event in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates, because you have shown how a developing country, which you were in 1971, in less than one and a half, two generations, could achieve a level of income higher than many countries in the world, in the Western world, but at the same time kept your southern spirit and your southern engagement fully as part of your uh, foreign policy and your engagement with the world. As members of the G77, the non-aligned movements, also with his leadership, the establishment of the Gulf Cooperation Council is really very uh, relevant for us at a time where we are going to have a conference on South-South cooperation of March of next year, in March of next year in Buenos Aires, in Argentina, to showcase leaders of the South, like Sayed, with the additional bonus that that leadership is continued by the current leadership of your great country. So I want to say thanks, Sayed, thanks, United Arab Emirates, for your contribution to building a better world. I want to finalize by saying that uh, we wanted to have a legacy of that conference, of that expo that we had. And you will see and you will receive before your departure, and this is kind of the official launch, but we'll do it later on with Dr. Alawar, is the, we're going to launch a publication, a publication that we perceive as another uh, milestone in the partnership between the United Nations and the United Arab Emirates. And also, we look forward to probably hosting the next Expo in 2020, the year you are going to be hosting the Global Expo, again, to showcase a great moment of this great Arab country and, and a great example to the world. Thank you very much, and thank you, Sayed.
Studies Center at the Dubai Police Academy and Secretary General of the Zayed International Prize for the Environment to give a presentation on the prize. Excellency, I receive the Ambassador of the Permanent Representative of the UAE to the United Nations. As Excellency Mr. George Shittick, Envoy of the Secretary General on South South and Director of the United Nations Office for South South Cooperation, distinguished ambassadors, delegates, ladies, and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have the pleasure of welcoming you to the celebration of the Year of Zayed on the occasion uh, of the centennial of the UAE's founding father, the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nayan. As mentioned earlier by Her Excellency about uh, Sheikh Zayed, we mercy upon him and his legacy. I would like to add some more touches that we cannot, of course, cover the whole thing of his legacy and achievements, but we would like to just highlight how Zayed Foundation and the uh, Dubai Police are taking part in this initiative. The UAE has a theme for each year, and 2018 has been declared to be the year of Zayed in order to emphasize, of course, his legacy and highlight his great achievements. Sheikh Zayed's vision and his courage, charisma, and success and achievements inspired the region and the world as, as most world leaders stated about him. His philosophy was nurtured by a clear vision and personal wisdom. He believed in the importance of education and invested in capacity building of the human resources. Simplicity and sincere care for humans and all living beings were some of his prominent characters. Caring for the environment stems from his own human nature and philosophy, which is based on heritage and a guiding faith. His love for nature enabled him to overcome the challenges, the challenges of desertification. And as he was determined to present his country as a model for arid regions development. And he succeeded. Accordingly, his thoughts and dreams were translated into policies and programs. He realized the need for sustainability 41 years before the concept was coined by the United Nations. He invested heavily in protecting endangered species and such as the Arabian oryx, falcons, and others in addition to the establishment of protected areas because he believed that each living organism has a role to play in natural balance. He said, we would like to see environmental awareness among our children in schools and universities, not only because they are the future leaders, but they have an important role to play now. The best manifestation of his efforts and achievements is what we can see in the UAE today, a green oasis in the desert. It's difficult to cover all his achievements in minutes, but I would like to highlight his global appraisal in the forms of uh, testimonials by current and former world leaders and internationally recognized awards. For example, Bill Clinton, former US president, stated, Anything written about this man, Sheikh Zayed Al Nayan, will not do justice to him. He is a very influential man, and you can feel his strength and his great dreams of a happy future for his country. Our leaders have already undertaken huge strides in making these dreams a reality through tremendous policies, strategies, and initiatives, such as the Ministries of Happiness, Youth, Artificial Intelligence, Advanced Sciences, and Space Program. So the question is now, what about Zaid International Foundation and the Dubai Police? In line with the directives of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, uh, Vice President of UAE, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, Patron of Zaid International Prize for the Environment, the Zaid Foundation, and the Dubai police launched an outreach initiative to celebrate this occasion nationally, regionally, and internationally. 
This includes smart tool applications like the Zad Green Challenge app and social media outreach, with, which has reached around, around 2 million hits worldwide. I thank you all for joining us in this celebration, and thanks to the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation, uh, and a special thanks also to Her Excellency, the UAE Ambassador and the Permanent Representative for the United, of the United Arab Emirates to the United Nations, and to the mission for their great efforts in organizing and making this event a grand success. But we are not just done. We are not just done. As said, that a picture can equal a thousand words, so I'm going to share with you a PowerPoint that with some pictures that uh, from my point of view, and I believe that are symbols of the message we are trying to convey today and for the great efforts being taken by our government for different organizations. So bear with me and we will just go over the presentation in uh, uh, seconds. So Zaid's philosophy and environmental heritage some of these statements Her Excellency previously has uh, covered. So we cherish our environment because it's an integral part of our country, our history, and our heritage. His vision and love for nature enabled him to overcome the challenges, as we said, the desertification. His charisma and courage and successful inspired so many people and achievements regionally and worldwide. The strong will was very clear in the environment and the future generation were always on his daily agenda. As we can see from uh, our many exhibits we have and our other videos, we were, he was determined to present his country as a model for arid regions development and he succeeded. A simple man who cared for others. The most prominent features of his philosophy were simplicity and sincere care for humans and all living beings believe in environmental cause, so we have here some impacts of his philosophy uh, and the years and uh, the commitments for the environment to integrate environmental consideration in all development plans, and that's going way back since 1975. Driven to advance space sciences, we were just recently now having uh, uh, being selected the first UAE astronaut to be sent to the space in uh, 2019. So when we go to in the history of his legacy, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Nahyan, we will see in 1975 and 1976 that he was meeting with prominent pioneers uh, of his time, including Egyptian American, uh, Dr. Farouk al-Baz, uh, as we maybe mostly, most of you know him, he was director of Center for Remote Sensing in uh, Boston University, which was approved by NASA, and other astronauts who had taken part. So since then, these issues were being taken into consideration and discussion, so now we can have it reality in our days now. So now, let's go to tes some testimonials from prominent leaders about Sheikh Zayed. We'll go through a famous British traveler was explaining in his book his Bedouin character and how this led him to his achievements. Queen Elizabeth of Britain said that we are impressed by the wise and expert leadership you practice as president and the economic success of your country is well known. Jacques Chirac, former French president, had, uh, said your highness enjoys the qualities of the leader, wisdom, influence, encourage, justice and generosity. Kurt Waldheim, fourth secretary general of the United Nations from 1972 to 1981 and the ninth president of Austria, the UAE was able to occupy a suitable place in the Arab family after many positions before the declaration of independence led by Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan. Queen Margaret, second of Denmark, my greetings and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, who arrived in the UAE to his high international status, and I admire the foreign policy approach of the UAE. And of course, Jimmy Carter, former president, 
uh, and as one of the winners of the first cycle uh, of the first category international impact was uh, the former president of uh, US, uh, Jimmy Carter. And he said that one cannot but admire the leadership of Sheikh Zayed and his political leanings and these tremendous urban and culture, cultural achievements in the UAE thanks to the leadership of His Highness in a record time. So that's what we just learned. And we have other, of course, uh, uh, from Arab countries, presidents, uh, as uh, Lebanese will never forget how the UAE under Sheikh Zayed's leadership has stood by Lebanon in our of and an hour of need. And this is the one that I just was focusing that anything written about this man, Sheikh Zad Al Hayyan, will not do justice to him. He is a very influential man and you can feel his strength and his great dreams of a happy future for his country. And now the question in line with the directives of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum to deliver the message about Zayed worldwide, the Zayed International Foundation for the Environment and the Dubai Police uh, launched an outreach uh, initiative to celebrate this occasion nationally, regionally, and internationally. So the Dubai Police launched its 2030 Road to Sustainable Development, even though that it's a security and policing uh, environment, but they have this, the roadmap to the sustainable development of Agenda 2030. And here is our uh, Commander-in-Chief of Dubai Police, the above. And below is the Chairman, uh, Professor Dr. Mohammed bin Fahad, Chairman of Zaid International, of the Higher Committee of Zaid International Prize for the Environment. We have in the police as well, College of Law and uh, Police Sciences, that they uh, learn and they are being taught credit hours for environmental security. Uh, and I myself teach this course uh, to the police uh, uh, officers. And then we have a college of postgraduate studies about sustainable development and environmental management as well. Also started in Dubai Police Academy. So now, we want to, I want to just summarize this initiative of this great impact in three initiatives. One is the commemorating the values of the Founding Father with the Green Zayed Green Challenge. What is this Green Zayed Green Challenge? We will keep it for uh, a later video that would just, and I am inviting everyone today in this gathering and in this meeting to humbly just download this application, either on the, uh, it works on the both system, iOS and on the uh, Android, so iPhone or the uh, Google system. And what is it? We will just, because we wanted for this one to showcase the sustainable development goals, achieve year of Zaid objectives, educates on environment and sustainability and sustainable development. It's all in one. But still, we didn't say, what is this green challenge? An innovative green education platform. We will have a video to just show what are the, explore the two unique and interactive games. So hand in hand with our lectures and our initiatives, the smart tools had to be developed and used in this initiative so that we can increase the number of our outreach and deliver the message of Sheikh Zayed worldwide. So we have two games here. The first game is called Knowledge Hunt. We have it both in Arabic and in English. Uh, it tests your knowledge on the environment sustainable development besides highlighting the role of Sheikh Zayed in the environment and sustainable development. The second game is called Smart Mind, Al-Aql al-Dhaki. It stimulates your mind testing. It's, it's drawn from the game that the children play, the game which, which was called uh, Guess Who. So, but it's modified to have, download this. We will talk about it, we will show it in the video later. The second thing, apart from this, uh, application was the social media campaigns. So we have uh, on the Zayed Foundation and the Dubai Police uh, on posts on Instagram, on the um, Twitter, on the Facebook, and we have our newsletter that are being also uh, having on our applications on the Zayed Foundation. Plus, 
our round trips to from that started from Dubai to different countries, starting from UAE to the regional in Egypt and Sudan, and then covered uh, Kenya for the United Nations Environment Assembly when was officially launched that application. Uh, and India was one of the stations. Malaysia, another station as well, with, of course, this was all by the support of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the United Arab Emirates, supporting this initiative and delivering the message of Zayed worldwide. So according to what we are here now, and of this date, and of the moment now, we have, we have succeeded in having articles about Sheikh Zayed by one of examples was the uh, Professor uh, Abdul Hamid Zakri. Um, he is the scientific uh, advisor to the Prime Minister of the of Malaysia. Uh, plus, we had it in uh, different languages. We had it in in Indian language. Our coverage, so we reached different target audiences with different languages as well, and in Malaysian as well. Uh, our until now, our total number that we reached the global outreach across platforms, including social media, mobile apps, newsletter, local and international events, we, the hits are around uh, 2 million from around the world. But we are looking forward to more, of course, and we are looking forward uh, today for all our uh, participants and the delegates and the uh, ambassadors, uh, respected as ambassadors that we have them with us today, to also forward uh, participate with us in this initiative in forwarding and delivering this message of Sheikh Zayed worldwide. So let's join hands and follow the footsteps of Zayed for sustainable living. And thank you very much for your uh, time and consideration. Thank you.
on the words we heard from our two speakers thus far. And I was a, a journalist at the BBC. That was about 1995. And uh, they asked me to go to the Emirates to do a documentary about the Godolphin operation. Uh, in, in Dubai, and also to go and uh, possibly have an interview with the president of the Emirates, Sheikh Zayed. I was so so honored to be chosen for this task. I went there. I did my shooting in the stables, and I met with Sheikh Mohammed and Sheikh uh, Hamdan, and they're all very much into horses. And I met uh, Saeed bin Sur. I think his name was the trainer of the Godolphins. And then I went to Abu Dhabi for my big interview. I was kept waiting, and then apparently the president has to go to Morocco for some reason. He took his famous daughter and he left the country. So I was really disappointed, and they told me, well, he said uh, he's gonna treat you a big treat and give you a very nice present. And I said, what it is? I was thinking about a gold watch. But <laughs> well, it wasn't. They said to me, it's, uh, a trip to his favorite new project, which is called Benias. It's an island with animals running around free, and etc. I said, really? <laughs> they said, yes. So they brought me a military helicopter, and I went with my BBC cameraman hanging from the door of the helicopter, tied down and everything with soldiers and all that. And they flew us over the Benias. And we filmed all these animals and plants, and it was apparently the, uh, uh, the, the idea of, came from the president himself, and he wanted to promote this and tell everybody about it through the BBC, which I worked for. I filmed, and we came down. There was a nice place. That was 95. I'm sure the island has changed tremendously since then. Um, does it still exist, by the way? It does, okay. And, uh, and then we, we went back to the BBC, we gave them the material, and they did something nice with it. That started in me the love of environment and preserving the environment. I learned from that lesson a lot. And actually, in 2010, I went around the world. I visited 18 islands. Uh, these islands threatened by disappearance because of the rise in water levels and the, uh, uh, the global warming. And I got a prize from the UN, a gold medal, for my environment, environmental work, which wouldn't have happened if it wasn't because of my visit to the United Arab Emirates and the lessons I got there through his, the late president. Well, thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. for uh, trying to reflect uh, as much as possible the very rich discussions of the Expo. So we take this opportunity to officially give the, to you the, the report. <laughs> and it's available for distribution and uh, this is a demonstration of how South-South cooperation is changing the world and how the United Arab Emirates are making South-South cooperation a pillar of your foreign policy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.
Sorry, I had a bit, a bit uh, I was living, I had two big chops. Uh, and, and, uh, <laughs>